Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where we're giving you all the latest news in the game industry. And if you're an Xbox fan, you may be excited to know that another first party Xbox game was announced today from none other than Ninja Theory. Yes, the same Ninja Theory that is also working on Bleeding Edge as well as Hellblade 2. They are indeed working on a third game after all, and honestly, it sounds really good, so we're going to talk about that today. As always though, we have plenty of other stuff to discuss as well, including more games to be made in the Resident Evil engine, the Xbox Series X oddly leaked online, why Cyberpunk 2077 was delayed, and a new PlayStation IP, so stay tuned for all of that. But before we do get into all that, let's talk about this Ninja Theory game because this just dropped out of nowhere. It usually seems like Xbox games are revealed at some big event like E3 or Gamescom, but Ninja Theory instead announced this over their dev diaries, which you can view on YouTube as of this moment. In this video, they do talk a little bit about Hellblade 2 and what it will be about and how it would continue the groundwork of the first game and our insight into Simula's psychosis. The sequel is planning on building on that to show how madness and suffering show myths, gods, and religion. This sounds absolutely fascinating, or at least in my opinion. I love the first game, and the thing is, I do find psychological issues to be very intriguing, so I am very curious to see where they go with Hellblade 2. I think that they can do a lot of really cool stuff with this premise, but the way that they approach these type of games, I think it's going to make us think in a deeper way. They did also mention that about double the people will be working on Hellblade 2 compared to the first game, so this should put them at around 40 people for Hellblade 2. It still sounds like they are trying to keep a relatively small team, but they really seem to be taking advantage of that extra budget from Microsoft. Anyways though, after talking about Hellblade 2 and the Insight Project, they then announced a brand new game for the very first time by the name of Project Mara, which is being explained as a real world and grounded representation of mental horror. This game, much like Hellblade, will be focusing on mental issues, and Ninja Theory did note that it is based off of real lived experience accounts and research, and that they are trying to convey the horrors in the mind as accurately and realistic as possible. I do expect this game to be very thought provoking, and it sounds incredibly ambitious, because anytime you do deal with a sensitive subject like this, it can be a challenge to convey that in a realistic way. After Hellblade though, I completely trust that Ninja Theory can pull this off. On all accounts though, this does appear to be a story driven game, but it will be experimental, so I don't think this will be like anything else on the market. I don't think that this will be like Hellblade either, other than the fact that it does have ties with mental issues. In Project Mara, or Mara, I'm not really sure, it might actually be more terrifying in a sense. I'm not saying that this will be a horror game per se, but a psychological horror is the first thing that I think of when they mention terrors of the mind. It could be a horror game, again, I'm not saying that it is though. It may deal with a very serious mental illness though, like schizophrenia as an example. In the teaser, it does show the character breathing very heavily, she can't tell what's real anymore, text talking about she distracts herself, and terror from something. It ends with some monstrosity that looks like the main character with thick veins sitting over her shoulder that just gave me chills, so I'm thinking it will play off some kind of mental issue that deals with hallucinations of some kind. And that is something that I found to be noteworthy is that Ninja Theory did say this game will only have one character and one location. Now that isn't to say that the environment won't change because we will be seeing the world through the eyes of the main character, but I think it's going to really try to put us in the mind of somebody with this mental illness, with whatever it is. I think this truly will be fascinating and could help people understand better what others are dealing with. I will say this though, Xbox got a great studio when they acquired Ninja Theory. Ninja Theory has always been really talented, but now we're starting to see what Ninja Theory can do with a good budget. They have doubled the size of the Hellblade team. They're working on this experimental game Project Mara, and they also have Bleeding Edge, a competitive multiplayer game. And that's the thing about these acquisitions. It doesn't just help Xbox, but it's also helping the studios reach their full potential. This is very exciting, and not only am I excited for what Ninja Theory has in store for us, but I'm, I'm really excited to see what other studios comes up with as well. 
Studios like Compulsion Games always comes to my mind because they're another really creative studio, but in the past, you can kind of tell they have been limited, and they could use a little bit more polish with their games. With Xbox's extra funding, though, they could take that next step. Xbox isn't dictating what these studios develop, and it really seems like they're giving them creative freedom, so it will be interesting to see what other studios start to come up with as well. Anyways, are you excited about Ninja Theory's game Project Mara? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on, we do have some more Xbox news, and I'm going to try to go through these quick because there isn't really much to say about this, but yes, it does appear that an Xbox Series X prototype leaked online. I mean, this picture is clear as day. You can even see the serial number, which I found to be really odd because you would think that whoever this leaker is would try to blur that out, but not in this case. You know, Microsoft can track that, so it's just an odd little thing that I think a lot of people's noticed by this point. It does make me think, though, that this could be a controlled leak. Maybe Phil Spencer himself was just like, okay, let's take a picture of this and show the world. It's not like it's going to hurt anything, it's pretty much just the ports that looks exactly like the prototype that Brad Sams was sharing around a few weeks ago. It does have two rear USB-A ports, a single HDMI port, a digital optical out port, and of course you have the Ethernet. The weird rectangular port though still seems to be a bit of a mystery. Brad Sams is thinking it's for debugging where I've seen others believe it could be for a solid state drive. I'm really not sure myself, but here it is, our very first look of the Xbox Series X. I do hope whoever leaked this though, it was a controlled leak because otherwise they're going to be in a lot of trouble once Microsoft tracks that serial number. Now the other Xbox related announcement is more Xbox Game Pass games and that's always a great thing. As you know, I'm an avid supporter of Xbox Game Pass and really I don't know how you can't be by this point. They just continue to make this service absolutely amazing and I already think it's the best deal in gaming. Regardless, the Plague Tale has officially been announced for Xbox Game Pass alongside Sea Salt, Indivisible, and Fishing Sim Pro. The Fishing Sim one isn't all that interesting, but the Plague Tale immediately becomes one of the best Xbox Game Pass games available. Definitely go check that game out if you like story-driven experiences. It's pretty cool with an interesting narrative and it's stealth-based gameplay. Also Indivisible, which I'm actually interested in because I, I haven't really played this game yet and I do adore the art style of this one. Hopefully it's as good as it looks, but as always, more great content from Xbox Game Pass. In other news, we got a couple of Capcom leaks and rumors. Now we have spoken about a new Dino Crisis on this channel several different times, so you probably know by this point that I'm very hopeful about this. But a leaker by the name of Dusk Golem, which apparently is a well-respected insider for Resident Evil related leaks, is claiming that Capcom is going to be rebooting a couple of games using the Resident Evil engine. This is something that I just keep begging for on this channel, and the most obvious choice here is Dino Crisis. It's basically Resident Evil with dinosaurs, so it would be the absolute perfect game to reboot with the Resident Evil engine. And even though he used the word reboot here, he did say it was in similar vein to Resident Evil 2 and 3, so I'm fully expecting this to be a remake, and he even says that this will be seen soon. So 2020 may finally be the year of Dino Crisis' return, and I can't wait to see it if this ends up being true. He did mention a couple of games will be using the Resident Evil engine though, so I will ask you all, what do you think this other game could be? Now he also talked about Resident Evil 8, and I know that has been on people's minds for a while. I think a lot of people were kind of expecting Resident Evil 8 rather soon, but it appears that Resident Evil 8 is still years away because they focused on the remakes instead. But Resident Evil 3 should be the last remake for a while. So for those hopeful of Resident Evil 4 remake, maybe out of luck. However, there is supposedly a new Resident Evil game next year, just not related to either a remake or Resident Evil 8. It could be Revelations 3 or something like that, uh, just kind of throwing that one out there. But honestly, if all this does end up being true, I think this is excellent news. Capcom truly has been on a roll lately. And speaking of horror games, it's also rumored that Sony is working on a new horror game for the PlayStation 5 thanks to an industry insider. That's literally all we know at this moment, but speculation has immediately shifted over to Hideo Kojima's next game. 
Of course, Hideo Kojima and Sony has a good relationship with one another, and based off recent Hideo Kojima tweets, he is looking to develop a horror game. So, could the two pair up once again after Death Stranding? I don't think Death Stranding has performed all that well in terms of cells, but Hideo Kojima is incredibly talented. Sony may be willing to roll the dice here and see what Hideo Kojima can come up with. We also need to remember that he developed the cult classic PT, which was unfortunately cancelled. PT, of course, was just a demo of Silent Hills, but it did show a lot of promise. Funny thing I mentioned Silent Hills though, because it's also being reported that Konami is going to try to revive Silent Hills with two games in development. One will take inspiration from Until Dawn, while the other is meant to be a reboot. I guess it's just a good day for horror fans in general. Granted, this is Konami, and I think they still have a lot to prove, as they just have not had a great track record recently. Now the last thing I want to talk about is Cyberpunk 2077, and as we all know by this point, it has been delayed from April all the way back to September. This has left a lot of fans disappointed, but there may be more to this delay than what we originally thought. While CD Projekt Red has been saying they will further polish the game to make it better, which I do fully believe, there is a rumor circulating right now that they also delayed it because the performance on base consoles is not great. So supposedly the PlayStation 4 and the original Xbox One, it's just not satisfactory. All of this is starting to sound like CD Projekt Red is looking to release Cyberpunk 2077 on next generation consoles as well, and I think that has always been kind of expected. But to me, if this is true, then I think CD Projekt Red should just delay this game until launch of the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. That way, early adopters can buy it on next generation platforms instead. Better yet, if CD Projekt Red just announces that Cyberpunk will release for the next generation consoles, then people can just hold off on buying it in September if they want. Either way, I mean, the game does look excellent, but I do hope it performs well for everybody at launch. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Peace out.